In this video we're going to take a look at the chase challenge on Hack the Box. So it's an easy challenge in the uh, forensics category and the description says one of our web servers triggered an AV alert but none of the sys sysadmins say they were logged onto it. We've taken a network capture before shutting the server down to take a clone of the disk. Can you take a look at the PCAP and see if anything is up? So we'll download the files here. Presumably we'll have a packet capture to open. Let's um, yep, we've got a PCAP file there. Let's copy it over to our local directory. Enter our password to save that. And let's open up the PCAP. So we open this up. It's quite a small PCAP anyway. We could just work through it like this. But um, something I normally do whenever I open PCAPs is have a quick look at the file properties first of all. We can see here there's 216 packets. We can have a look at the average packet size um, and the date and the time of the capture, how long it elapsed for. Here's a six minute capture. Um, it's also worth checking out the protocol hierarchy. So we can have a look here and we can see that 97.2% of the packets were TCP, 2.8% were UDP, and of the TCP, we have HTTP packets. We have some different types of data in there line based data. Your, uh, URL form encoded and then just some data as well so we could set these to filter um, here we might want to select the data and say apply this as a filter selected and then we can go through and see here there's a start of a um, data stream here so we can right click on the post so this is a post request to upload.aspx we can set follow HTTP stream and then we can kind of browse through this in a more readable format. And scrolling through that, we'll see that there was a request to this upload.aspx. And at 2222.22.22.5. And in here we have a, a VB script. You can see here, page language, VB. And this is doing some shell execution. Let's scroll down a little bit. We have this get command.aspx. And then there's a form which posts to the command aspx. And in this case, it looks like a command has been sent, which is URL encoded. Let's go and URL decode this. Let's go to Cyberchef. If you have Burp Suite open, it's quite easy to just use the hackverter in there as well, if you have that as an extension. I don't have it open at the moment because we're probably not going to need it too much for forensic challenges. So we do the URL decode here and we'll see that this is calling command.exe and it's passing as the command cert util URL cache. It's basically grabbing this um, netcat64.exe and it is placing it in the local directory. So it's downloading Netcat from the attacker's machine here and downloading it to the local directory users public nc.exe so that we can then get a um, reverse shell or execute commands. Let's go back and see was there anything else here. Okay, we have another command here. Is this different? It might just be the the view state that's different. Let's have a look. Yeah, it's just a longer view state, but oh, okay. This is actually making the reverse connection. So in this case, we're downloading NC64. We're saving it as NC.exe, and then now we're actually executing a command saying the NC.exe you just saved. We want you to execute that, and we want you to pass in as a parameter the IP address of the attacker's machine and the port number 444, and then pass over. Um, the command.exe. So essentially, this is us getting a. This is the attacker getting a reverse shell um, on the system. So that's the end of that um, stream. And the reason being, obviously, because the uh, the attacker doesn't need to go through HTTP anymore. They now have a reverse connection. So let's see. What if I go here? Let's. Another way we can do, we can filter here is by putting in the protocol up here. So we can go HTTP and go and have a look and see what else there was. We we went through a lot of this stuff anyway. Let's just follow this HTTP stream. This is the downloading of Netcat. So you can see that doesn't make too much uh, sense to us there because it's actually downloading the executable file. Let's go back again. Let's set that to HTTP. 
Uh, what we could maybe say as well, port equals um, no TCP dot port. So you can see here as an example TCP dot port equals eighty. If we set that to TCP port equals four four four, we have our reverse shell that we know connected on four four four. So let's follow the TCP stream. And you can see that the attacker ran who am I? They ran the IP config, got the IP details. And then they execute a PowerShell command. PowerShell bypass um, info web request. So they're making a call to get this text file and save it in public users public file.txt. And we got an error here to say that the object was not found. So let's grab the name of that file. Let's just go back to our HTTP and see that we miss anything. So this is we saw this at the end of the HTTP as well. Let's follow that. And we can see that it grabbed this text file and then the response was hey there. So the name of this text file looks interesting. Let's go to let's go to Cyberchef and paste this in here. There's no URL encoding to do. If you don't know what type of encoding is used in this scenario, because we could just be going through to try different things, we could say, uh, maybe it's base 64 encoded or base 32, or um, so we we could we could do that those as examples. And in this case, it is base 30, it's base 32 there. But if we do base 60, let's try base 64 and turn off the base 62. Okay, it's base th it is it is base 32 encoded. Another way we could have done that though is the magic operator. So let me find magic. Pass in here magic, and it'll basically try a lot of different possibilities. And uh, in this case, it got the flag. It identified that it was a base thirty-two value, and returned the flag for us. So that's how you solve this forensics challenge on Hack the Box. Hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. Thanks.